So someone the other day in the comments had mentioned to me that we could be getting more damage with our backstabs had we gone for trenchant uh, crits instead of rogue, and which is definitely the true. I luckily, luckily found a rapier that had those perks, and uh, we definitely do more damage. But that kind of got me onto thinking, how much more damage can we be doing on this build? Uh, as I you saw in the last update, we have gone. To, uh, we dropped that 50 strength for 200 con um, just to feel like we can survive. A lot of it was a couple of things. We were learning the greatsword, PvP felt like trash, um, but a lot of it was PvP feeling like trash. But with us feeling more comfortable with the setup now, um, I have number one dropped back down to 50 strength. Uh, back to 50 strength and you can see with our great sword uh just how much more damage we are doing with it um i know we are in pve but i can use pve as a baseline because um i know i was not doing this much damage to pve mods before and uh we're gonna take a look at some pvp stuff here in a second but uh yeah with just a couple of changes uh we went from the build doing a pretty decent amount of damage um to what it's at now but if you want to just take a look at how much actual damage we're doing now with the backstabs uh yeah uh again i know it's pve bobs but we're gonna see here in a second what it looks like in pvp but we are just doing so much more damage with our uh rapier backstabs and it's not just the backstabs once we have somebody fully set up uh because of the fact that it's rogue now or instead of it being rogue it's trenchant crits we have so much more flexibility with how we use the uh, rapier. Previously, we were just trying to set up a repost backstab, but we can actually just sit on the rapier and get damage outside of that combo now, which is really, really nice. Um, and then again, like I said, with feeling more comfortable with that change to our rapier, the playstyle has kind of shifted a bit more as well to where I feel comfortable with this constitution drop because of how the build is kind of played which we'll uh see here in a second but taking a look at the changes that i've made for the build as you can also see there we do have uh two rune glass gems which i'll talk about in a second here but taking a look at the rapier uh we went from rogue sundering repost keen to trenchant crits sundering repost and keen and uh just so much so much more damage uh on this setup the gems that we are going to be going for on this setup is punishing and that's the other way that we ended up getting so much more damage than we had before because even with my 50 previously when we were running 50 strength um we definitely weren't doing this this much more damage uh we should technically be just be doing 10 percent more damage on our backstabs uh but it's a couple of other changes that are allowing us to hit so hard now with our rapier and then even with the greatsword, the greatsword we are hitting um, consistent 5k crits on people, which is uh, really, really nice. The uh, route for the armor is going to be punishing as well. Uh, the entire build is still the same. I uh, don't want to spend too, too much time on the gear and everything, but my gear and the jewelry and everything is still the same. But uh, we will be going for punishing gems in our armor now as i mentioned we had dropped that 50 constitution to put back into our strength and now i'm just putting all of my extra points into constitution so we still are kind of getting that benefit of what my idea was before of going for 200 con because we're sitting at 11,900 with hardy so it's still a nice amount of health uh to have and i think once i get my gear score up on my armor pieces we can definitely push our health up to 12k but you can see my DPS now for our great sword is 1300. Uh, so getting that 10% um, node back from having 50 strength on top of our DPS being so high now on our great sword is what's allowing us to do so much more damage. Now I did switch around a couple of perks on the great sword. It's still roughly looking pretty much the same. We dropped the passives for Skyward just to move them around a little bit. Because I dropped uh, the 200 con, I wanted to go ahead and pick up that defensive perk so we have re-slotted perfect vigilance and then with the other passive i have gone for aggressive shift and aggressive shift was the other part of the build that i felt like we were missing um 
both are very very valuable it's i find with this setup there's situations there were situations early on with uh fights where i needed a guard shift more so uh, but aggressive shift is just as important because a lot of the time what we were doing was we would have to expend one of our abilities to enter us into onslaught stance and then if we make any mistakes being that we are already in that stance we would uh, take so much more damage but the fact that we can now open up with a heavy to just put in damage or instantly get that three stacks of rend with our skyward is what is allowing i think the build to feel so much more smooth but uh yeah i'm very very happy where where it's sitting right now but uh let's take a look at some of these fights now against tankier targets this is where i'm really really liking the changes on the build um previously with the damage we were sitting at before we would have to essentially make zero mistakes and pull out every single cc from targets uh that were tankier to not die even with that 200 con but with the increased damage is just damage that's all that matters now everything we needed you can create through damage you can create space you can create pressure um everything is through damage and you see just without any setup we can just throw 3k crits like it's nothing on tankier targets uh, but she goes for that hammer stun we dodge it there and uh, we end up getting clipped there and she cancels our flesh but we go ahead and negate the entire cross cut there and i'm just going to go ahead and look for uh, an opening here she misses her initial heavy attack and i try to guard point but we end up getting caught there by both those stuns i pop my stone form just to break out so we don't take too much damage and uh, she goes for the cross cut again we land the parry and just like that we hit a 5k crit on the uh on the backstab there follow up with a flush because our evade was not up yet and uh you can see there even on tanky targets we can hit them for just ridiculous amounts of damage now jumping into the second fight with this player though uh she goes ahead and opens up with the hammer stun and we go ahead and avoid that with the rapier I found it's just easier and safer just to avoid those stuns uh, instead of trying to uh, block them or react to them. But we go for a little bit of a trade and we exchange some damage here and uh, we managed to parry the stun that time. We don't exactly line up the backstab and she has fortifies. We didn't do too chunk of a hit but we still have her pretty much dead as we followed up with a, a lot of damage and uh, she goes for the cross cuts doesn't really go for a heal we just follow up with the relentless rush there for a second hit the thing i like about this setup more is that all of our damage isn't loaded into that backstab uh, our great sword and other parts of our rapier are now uh, just as explosive and lethal but jumping into the third duel here we get caught by the shockwave there and by the second stun she goes for the grasping roots but we have our stone form there to just not get rooted and uh with that little exchange we kind of go back to neutral and uh we kind of faint our heavy there and go for the dodge open up with the heavy and we both chunk each other for a really really disgusting amount of damage there but i know i have her rended up we block the calamity there or her shockwave with with our calamity goes for the cross cut and we get the parry on the second hit and this time we again just land a disgusting hit because we line up the backstab properly hit her for 5k uh switch into the great sword and we uh can continue that pressure with both of our weapons she goes for the hammer stun and each time she goes for it we have that calamity ready but uh i'm really really liking where this build is feeling on tankier targets the type of fight that i was just itching for though was a fight against a light armor player to see what kind of damage we can put out and uh, we have a fight against a great sword and spear player here who's in light armor and uh, this is going to be a really good way to see how much damage we can do but uh, opening up this fight here, he opens up with the cross cuts and uh, we both are fully aware of the damage that we are capable of. So you can see us uh, both playing our space here very, very well. This is a really, really heavy footsie opening fight uh, as we don't want to get caught and burst it out immediately. We get caught by a little bit of the perforate there, but um, we are still pretty healthy. He lands the cross cut, so he has a slowed. So I go ahead and go for a cross cut of my own. And uh, you can see this how much importance both of us are placing on spacing in this fight uh if you get caught like that we should be caught by a sweep um it can be really really bad really fast we are on a really low amount of hp here um and he actually guard breaks us but we land the parry 
heavy attack from the front and I do more damage than I did to the heavy armor flare um, from the back. So I think that was what a 6k hit from the front. Um, so I, uh, I, I haven't been able to get one yet, but I am just itching to see what we can do to somebody fully rendered up, uh, from the back in light armor, but he respawns and jumps back onto us again, lands the sweep, gets a lot of damage in this time early and is able to finish out the kill a lot quicker. And you can see just why we're both placing so much importance on spacing. Um, if you can get somebody in that blender in light armor now, uh, it's pretty much game over. But jumping into the third fight, we both go for a couple of slashes, and then he opens up with a skyward. Missed the sweep, um, but again, you're going to see us go back to this little footsie game. And uh, he's going to try to go for a little cheeky sweep or a perforate around the corner. Looks like he goes for a perforate. We do avoid it, and we go for a relentless to get that uh, slow, and then we open up with the skyward to get him rendered up. And not even with a repost from the front again, we hit him for 5k damage. Just absolutely chunk him. I parry the last hit uh, and he goes for the cross cut. Parry it with the calamity and even in defensive stance, we hit him for a chunky 3k plus heavy attack. Um, just so much, so much more damage that we have now on the build and i um, absolutely loving it. You can kind of get an idea of the actual play style as well in these fights. Um, before we were leaning too heavily on either weapon. I was either playing too heavily on the rapier or too heavily on the greatsword. But I found the the synergy uh, between the two weapons because while we are looking for that backstab uh, max rent combo, um, that isn't the only way we have source to damage now. So we can literally just do whatever the situation hands us and get damage however we can and start to now mix up these combos a lot better. In the last actual fight here, he actually ends up switching to medium armor. Um, so it should be a much uh, more favorable situation for him. He goes for a couple of uh, slashes there. We block it with the Calamity. Open up with our flesh there. And uh, you see again, it's a little footsie game. I space out the sweep perfectly. And then we start opening up with damage on a rapier land that scabbards we haven't rendered up he goes for the perforates we're able to land the repost and uh less damage than before but still a chunky amount of damage and uh almost just as quickly as light armor um because he couldn't space us out as easier it just meant that uh he had to take the damage now and we we're able to finish him out in roughly the same amount of dam time excuse me as uh the light armor so that kind of goes to show uh, the damage, um, it's been feeling really, really good. At least today, when I was playing, the game started to feel a little bit better and uh, more things were working. So hopefully we stay on this track uh, because when PvP feels good, it, uh, it's really, really good. But we have another tankier target here, a Blunderbuss Ice user, and you can see it literally doesn't matter. Um, we can just open up almost any... Uh, tanky level of opponent obviously full tanks are another story but um we are just following him chasing him down and chunking him with both our rapier and uh, our great sword and we don't need the combo anymore to just straight up damage people out we then land the heavy on this light armor target almost one shot him there and then the wraith picks up the kill for us um but uh yeah i'm just getting more and more excited as we get this build further and further uh as always though thank you guys so so much for watching if you have any questions of course let me know in the comments but uh have a great day